the past, when I used to hear about refugees, admittedly, I paid little attention. I used to think of refugees as different people with different needs and that we had nothing in common. But since 2010, my home country, Syria, went through extreme circumstances that led to the world's worst refugee crisis since World War II. And I stopped seeing refugees as nameless, faceless people, and I started seeing them as friends and family. These are my closest friends at the University of Aleppo in Syria. We studied together electrical engineering, and most of them today are refugees. I will be telling you the story of one of them, my friend, Ayman. Now, usually when we hear stories about refugees, we hear about the heartbreaks and the sadness. But this approach may create some sympathy, but it feels that we are alienated from these refugees because it doesn't tell us anything else about them. So tonight, I'm not here to talk about tragedies. I'm here to talk about how refugees can still tell their stories in a humorous way. <laughs> and this is the way my friend Ayman tells his story. Ayman was living in Damascus. He had a good job, a house, and a car. After the conflict, he lost his job. So he told himself, Perhaps I need to move to a new place. But an inner voice told him, Oh, amen, don't be a sissy. Go and find another job. So he started looking for another job. He persisted. But while doing so, he was shot at by a sniper twice. He told himself, Perhaps I need to move to a new place. His inner voice told him, oh, amen, don't be a sissy. What are the chances of being shot a third time? <laughs> Later, he survived two massive explosions. He told himself, perhaps I need to move to a new place. His inner voice told him, oh, amen, get the hell out of here. <laughs> so amen sold his belongings and moved to Turkey. Over there, it was very difficult to find a job or to even survive. His savings started going down, and he was desperate for a solution. Eventually, he found one. He got connected with a guy who smuggled people to Europe. He found him a Greek passport with a lookalike of the name Anastasius. And he, told, and he booked him a ticket to Netherlands and told him, Amen, from now on, you're Greek. Go and learn some Greek. <laughs> so Amen started learning basic words and sentences. Melene Anastasius. My name is Anastasius. Yesas, goodbye. Segapo, I love you. Tikanis, how are you? And of course, Malaka. <laughs> Wanker. <laughs> Amen armed himself with faith, with courage, and with five Greek sentences. The travel, arrived, the travel date arrived. The officer at the gate asked him, Posalene, Melene Anastasius. And what's your final destination? My final destination is Netherlands. And then the officer asked a question that Amen did not understand. He panicked, he did not know what to do. So he blurted out everything he knew in Greek. <laughs> Hi, how, how are you? I love you, goodbye, wanker. The guy told him, you're from Syria, aren't you? He said, no, no, Greek, Greek. He said, listen, you're acting suspiciously. If you're from Syria, we will let you go because we know the situation. But if you're not from Syria, we will treat you as a terrorist. So if you have a Syrian passport, I highly recommend that you present it now. <laughs> Ayman went back home that day, and eventually, after many attempts, he made it to the, made it to the Netherlands. While it's very beautiful and peaceful in the Netherlands, Ayman is a long way from his job, home, or car. But that didn't stop him. Because just last month, Ayman won a startup contest and he now started his own startup uh, non-for-profit business to help Syrian refugees settle in the new culture. The story of Ayman is the story of many million refugees. From afar, 
Refugees can look like aliens or zombies, but when we look closer, we realize that they are people just like us. They have stories, they have dreams, and they have humor. Thank you.